good evening and welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, that, that streaming idiot, here with a, a, a special evening edition of our Streaming Idiots uh, series where we, we took, take a look at everything streaming from hardware to software to cameras and capture cards and mics and all the paraphernalia that you need to put together a really neat broadcast. Don't have to have a huge budget for it, but you really can do it. Now, if you're watching this live, I'm delighted. If you haven't already signed into the chat room, and I can tell there are a couple of folks out there that are hanging out, we'd love to have you come in and chat because we've got a great guest with us tonight, uh, Martin Sinclair, the CEO and designer, developer, creator of vMix. We're going to bring him on here in just a second. But uh, I want to make sure you get your questions in. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And I'm so sorry you missed this broadcast live. It would have been really cool. And, and we'll, hopefully we can do it again sometime in the future. Um, the, uh, the, the, the buzzword that I'm working with tonight is, is one that you don't often hear people talk about directly. And I think I ran it on this about uh, a couple of months ago. But it's integrity the integrity, the ability to really tell the truth, to, to reveal the truth, to re reveal the whole truth, not to hold anything back as if to possibly deceive somebody. And the man that we have tonight is somebody that I believe to be a man of integrity. And I'm delighted that he would take time out of his schedule to come on with us. And let me see if I can, I can cue him up here. Um, because sometimes I don't always get this stuff done just right. Here we go. Um, yep, there we go. Got to get rid of that music. Still learning this program. We got Martin Sinclair with us. Martin, welcome and thank you for coming. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. It's great, great to finally be here. I think we've been talking about this now for a couple of months, and um, yeah, it's great to to finally be on your show. You're, you're very gracious. Very gracious. Martin and I were talking in the pre-show that we, we, you know, we're both Sinclairs and, and all the Sinclairs in the entire world, I guess you could say the, the whole galaxy, come from Scotland. And so we were tr just playing, you know, do you know so-and-so, do you know so-and-so? And, and we didn't know any of the same people. So I suspect uh, we, we really are related way back there somewhere, but uh, not where we could catch it in a, uh, in, in a, in a couple of few minutes. Um, Martin. I've got I've got a thousand questions. The the chat room is filled up with questions, and, and I hope you guys will keep asking them. And by the way, in the chat room, if you um, if if your question doesn't get ans answered, ask it again because sometimes it'll scroll up out of sight, and, and we might miss it. So, Martin, one of the questions that I've I've got for you, and I just want to start. I'm going to go ahead and start with the toughest question of the night because this is the elephant in the room, and we got to get this out of the way before we do anything else. What's the little V for? <laughs> um, I couldn't tell you. Um, <laughs> it was, I guess, you mean the, the style, or the way it's stylized is just done that way because it was video mixing software. Back when I was working on it, um, just for my own church, back when I started building it, that was the only reason I was using the software for it at the time, just very basic uh, USB cameras, switching, um, and it was just, I thought it was, you know, video mixing software and the idea of V-mix just, um, I don't know, it happened somewhere along the lines, I don't remember the reason why, um, and making it a small V and a capital M, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't know if it was if it was some sort of divine inspiration or 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 somebody just elbowed you and said, Martin, Martin, you got to do this, and here's the reason why. Okay, well, good. I'm glad we got that one out out of the way, right off the bat. But you did you did bring up the point that I was going to go to next, which is you you really created this for your your own use uh, with your church in order to do a, a a Christmas production. Is that right? Yeah, so at the time um, I had this idea of just doing a multi-camera um, recording of the Christmas carol service just so we could post that online. And this was all before, I guess, before YouTube, before anything like that. Um, we'd, make the, we'd upload the video as a WMV file, you know, this was before MP4s were um, everything and uploaded that to the church website so people that couldn't make it to the carol service could then watch it afterwards. Um, so that was the, the plan. And so we're looking at some of these the 
equipment out there and there was a switcher that we were able to borrow for the first Christmas carols I was involved with um, from Sony called the Sony Anycast and this was a little compact sort of in a laptop case but it wasn't a laptop it was a specialized switcher um, and so I looked at it and thought, well, you know, I <laughs> might as well just as a hobby see if I can recreate that in software. Never expecting at all being able to do anything close to what it was capable of. Um, but what really motivated me was the price. This switcher cost $25,000. <laughs> so I really, you know, the church didn't have the budget for that and I didn't want to push them to buy this thing. So I thought... All right, that's my motivation. Let's see within 12 months' time before the next carol service I could get some basic software together. And fortunately, I was able to, and that was vMix version 1 the next year. Oh, my goodness. And, and when did you realize in this process that there was a real you know, a product there that other folks would, would like? Well, it was probably only a few years later. I was working on it and, you know, I'm a, a bit of a perfectionist. I was never happy that it had all the features that were that I would want somebody else to, to look at, you know. If I gave vMix as it was that first year out into the, into the market, people would, you know, probably be laughing at it, <laughs> how basic it was. So it took a few more years after that until, yeah, I was happy. It, it's got the basic capabilities now. It's got the... It's a bit easier to use. Um, it's got a few more settings. It's got a help file. Once that was all together, it took until um, 2009 when I released the first beta to the public. Um, and it's been just, you know, version after version each year ever since then. What, what version was 2009? Um, I don't think it had a version. It was beta one. Okay. I think that's what it was called. Okay. Uh, we've gone through a few different versionings over the years. Um, it used to be by the year so I think then it was since beta 1 it was vMix 2010 and then there was vMix 2011 and 2012 and then I thought well hey I won't necessarily release a new version every year or so I thought at the time so I thought I'd just give it a single version number um, but it turns out it's been two or three new versions each year since then so um, yeah it's been pretty crazy and and currently now version 15 vmix 15 is the current version yeah so i think vmix 2012 was internally vmix 7 i'm going to say so that was 2012 so yeah since 2012 it's gone from 7 to 15 um so that it's just i'd borrowed the google chrome versioning system where they went to a major version number every release regardless of whether it had a lot of features or only a couple of features um so i went with that so it doesn't necessarily mean that the jump from 14 to 15 would have been as any any bigger than just say 15 to 15.1 but I thought it was easy for customers to say hey I've got 15 or I've got 14 it was very easy to manage so that was why I went with that sort of versioning number system and and currently there are six different packages for the vMix software um, and you know you probably didn't start with six though you started with no. one <laughs> started with only a couple um, it's you know, it, it, in my head, it seems like, hey, we should probably just have two versions and and that will make my life a little bit easier with all of those orders. But we've just got so many unique different customers that all have their, their own requirements. And I don't want to charge any more than, you know, the customer needs. And so that's why we've got six versions now with the um, full-blown instant replay capabilities in our highest end version. And there's also a free version there, vMix Basic, which is just standard definition and basically has all of the capabilities I used when doing those standard definition Christmas carol services for churches all those years ago. So that version of vMix has essentially been free ever since then in vMix Basic. Folks, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I started out talking about Martin as being a man of integrity, but he's also a very humble man and he has no clue how to price his products. His products are priced way too low. The value for what you get for your dollar is like, you get like two bucks worth of value for every buck you spend on vMix. It, you know, Martin, you, 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 I, I know you've been traveling in the US, but you, you probably have to have been hitchhike from place to place because you just haven't had <laughs> enough cash to make it. Man, you gotta charge more for your products. I mean, let me, from, a, from a value standpoint, from what it's worth to somebody, you are providing way more value 
then you're receiving for compensation. And that's, that's where I think the humility comes in because I don't know that you really, you really grasp how valuable your product is to the people that are using it based on what it's able to do. I mean, that's a big pat on the back for me because, you know, I, I don't give out compliments a whole lot. Um, but, but, you know, well done, well done. Well, thanks, thanks for that, Tom. But here's, here's the interesting thing uh, about all of that. Um, to a lot of people, hey, it's very high value and there's a lot of features there at that price point. Um, but it's been amazing to see vMix being sold all throughout the world. vMix is, is, has been popular in all of these, I guess, uh, a lot of Eastern European countries um, like vMix. And so in those particular markets, the value is actually perhaps a little bit high. Whereas in, say, America or Europe or Australia, the price is is quite low. So really? I could go the Apple route of changing the pricing depending on the country, but I think, you know, make it the same <laughs> for everybody and hope that there's some kind of middle ground there with the pricing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very good. Very good. But you don't just have the software products because you're moving into hardware. Um, you've got you've got three different hardware products. You got the you got the Go, which is really incredible, and I wish I had pictures to flash up. But anybody with half a brain can go to vmixhd.com uh, and, and get the and see the pictures of this. But you've got this incredible portable PC that's got what up to eight inputs and is either HDMI or SDI, and that's what in that what you used in, at NAB in the Teradek booth. Ah, uh, yeah. So um, I'll just drop the the web page over there so people can can take a look. Um, so this is the vMix Go system. This is what we used for the Teradek live show. And we've had this out here now for just the past few months. We've been building um, a lot of resellers, particularly in the US, so customers can go out and buy it. Um, it's got eight inputs. Uh, or you can choose two of those eight as outputs, has audio input and output um, through XLR slash uh, TRS Nutric combo uh, connectors. So both types of audio cables you tend to have in mixing desks can plug in for input and output audio. And we also have on the side here um, some disk drive bays. Uh, four of them, so you can install SSD drives, up to four of them, and they're fully plug and play. So if you're not using one, you can unplug and put another drive in. Um, so this system was used for the Teradek um, live show, and we built it based on the requirements of that show um, in the previous year. We sort of had a prototype last year at NAB 2014. Um, and then we built all of those requirements, you know, looked at what our customers needed as a, I guess, a flagship, best of the best. What do they need to do the best possible production? And we kept hearing, you know, need up to eight inputs. Um, that seemed pretty obvious um, for a lot of customers. The ability to bring an audio input and output, that was also very important. Um, and also the ability to take storage input and output because at the Teradek live show, there were all these different segments and all these different guests and they all wanted their clips of their interviews pretty much after it was done. Um, now in that particular show, they used external recorders. Um, but we thought, you know, we'll put the functionality in the vMix Go um, for customers who don't want to use external recording capabilities. If they want the recordings there ready to go to hand to their customers pretty much straight after the show. Um, so that's the sort of thinking behind this vMix Go. Uh, and there's also a four input HDMI model that we have as well. If people don't need all of those eight inputs, but they want the built-in screen and they want the portable portability that the system provides. So it's been, it's been really fun for me to be able to build this um, with Ken Bell. He's, he's our hardware guy um, based in Denver, Colorado. He's been building these systems and working all of the um, connections out. So that's been great to work with him on that. So he's part of the vMix team now, building all of these hardware systems, um, such as the vMix Go. Um, so um, I guess <laughs> that's, that's my ad spiel for you. Um, if you have any questions about it, um, I can answer those. Anybody in the chat room as well or um, anything else they want to discuss, you know, can jump right into it. Okay, well, I'm sure they're thinking of some questions now that you've given them that open door. But, but while they do that, let's, let's pick up the last piece of, well, not the last piece of hardware, but another piece of hardware, which is the, uh, the Thunder, uh, which is a cool little laptop solution uh, for vMix. Tell us about Thunder. 
Yeah, you're, you're going to pull it up. And we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll there we go. Um, hang on, I'll just scroll it, scroll it down a little bit. So uh, that's the vMix Thunder there. So that we've uh, partnered with AJA, and they make this great IO 4K Thunderbolt box that has four HDSDI inputs. Um, or outputs and HDMI input and output, a single HDMI input and output. And it all is in a single box that so can be connected to any Thunderbolt enabled laptop. So we've partnered with them to combine this with vMix um, and with Sony Vegas. So you have the complete solution uh, for any live show in a laptop. Um, so all you need is a Thunderbolt laptop. This, the one shown, is, is a Thunderbolt laptop from MSI. It's a nice compact unit, and they now make one with a 4K screen in a laptop, which I thought was, was pretty cool. Um, so you can do the live show with your SDI cameras or your HDMI cameras on the laptop, and then once you're done, you can go ahead and edit it in Sony Vegas. Um, all within a single laptop, and um, it's been, you know, really great to to work with AJA because traditionally this box, um, I'll switch back over to me, but traditionally that box was used for post production. So that's how you can bring in 4K camera uh, footage, you know, for film and for editing and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and we saw very early on, and AJA saw very early on, particularly Eric over there at AJA, um, I've been working with. Um, he saw the value in it for streaming, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could easily bring in four cameras into a laptop without having to juggle all of these different USB devices um, and only being able to work in standard definition in USB usually, what if you could do all of that in HD? Um, and that has been, you know, my goal from the beginning. I don't know if, if people there are familiar with vMix um, for a long time now. You'll know my little demo video I have on the YouTube, YouTube channel where I had a Thunderbolt box and I had a capture card installed inside of it. Um, and I've ever since then, I've wanted a complete box that you don't have to install, you don't have to assemble, it's just ready to go. And that's why we built the vMix Thunder, just based on what I've been looking for for a long time myself. That is so cool. That is so cool. I love it. I can't wait to to uh, to to actually get my hands on one, and and give it a shot. Um, in fact, I th I think I want one of everything. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's just like Christmas. It it is so cool. Um, let's see if we had any questions popped up. Um, we've got Andrew who is in uh, Melbourne who has just tuned in saying, "Have you started early? I thought I was I would have thought I was here on time, but I guess it's what it's probably ten." 10, uh, 10 20 in Australia in the morning on Friday uh, or Thursday. Um, let's let's sidetrack from that and uh, oh Andrew's correcting me says it's 10 18. There we go. Um, and and go back towards software and talk about because not I mean the, the the go and the thunder are, are wonderful but not everybody has a budget for that and in fact a lot of folks that I'm talking to, um, I'm saying, hey, start out with a 60-day trial. See, see if you like it. You know, if if after 60 days you're still not sure, start with the free package. Do do standard definition. You know, get familiar with the software. Learn how it works. Make sure it's what you want before you go. And one of the things that I hear repeatedly is that vMix is so lightweight in terms of its CPU usage because I think you're you're making a lot of use of the, the GPU in each PC. Can you talk about that a little bit? That, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, so when I started out building it, the first challenge was how can you mix multiple cameras um, on a PC with the CPU capabilities that were available at the time. Now, vMix started work, I worked on it probably around 2004, 2005, around that time frame. And CPUs back then, I think it was, you know, Pentium 4 days, um, where the, the fastest you could get was a Pentium 4 3 gigahertz, uh, which was ran very hot. And to put it into perspective, the new Intel 3 gigahertz processors are probably three to four times faster um, because they have more cores and um, uh, just more efficiency with lower power usage. But back then, man, the Pentium 4 3 gigahertz was a huge power hog. And even then, it was difficult to mix on the CPU 
multiple standard definition cameras and keep a high frame rate. So I had to look quickly in other solutions and uh, the graphics API that was available in video games back then uh, was just amazing to me. You know, you, even back then, the, the video games and the quality of the graphics people were playing at, they were playing at near HD, uh, 60 frames a second with these, you know, almost film CGI quality graphics. And I thought there must be a way to be able to take advantage of that power and do video mixing. And so that was really the motivation of, I didn't have the top of the line processor, but I had a reasonable graphics card. You know, I played a few games um, back in the day there. <laughs> and I thought, I'll take advantage of what was available. And the graphics card was there, tinkered around with the APIs of it. And that was, you know, basically how all the mixing of the videos um, got started. And all, just added on slowly additional features in the video processing, you know, more transitions, color correction, all that sort of stuff is all happening all on the GPU. So that frees up the CPU for streaming and recording. That's pretty much all that the CPU is used for um, in vMix. And so it just, it opens up a whole lot of more um, possibilities on lower end hardware. Yeah, I think my vMix right now is cruising along at about 15%, um, not being stressed hardly at all. Yeah, that, that's, that's very, very cool. All right, here's a quick question. Uh, will vMix wind, be Windows 10 compatible? Yes, uh, we already have customers using it on Windows 10. Um, and as soon as Windows 10 is released, we'll, we'll put that up on our website. Um, as far as the capabilities of Windows goes, uh, for vMix, uh, Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 are pretty similar. I think a lot of the enhancements in Windows 10 are with the user interface. Um, I know a lot of users have, have, have shown frustration with the start menu um, in Windows 8, myself included, um, but there's a lot of great stuff in Windows 8 that vMix takes advantage of, particularly if you're running three to four, or, well, two to three different displays. Um, VMix, uh, Windows 8 tends to run a lot better. So it'll be great having those UI enhancements in Windows 10 for vMix, just so a lot of users are more comfortable upgrading from Windows 7, and then they can take advantage of all of this, these new uh, capabilities uh, that vMix uh, takes advantage of in Windows 8. So it'll be great to, to see that released later this year. So when I upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10, I'm going to see a performance improvement. Yeah, especially with multiple displays and running multiple full screen outputs. Uh, Windows 8.1, and they've made a lot of improvements with multiple uh, displays, um, particularly uh, just with the new graphics cards that are available now, you can do three displays on a single graphics card. Windows 7 seems to work 90% of the time, but there's 10% of systems out there that just struggle with three displays, whereas Windows 8 runs, runs very, very smoothly. So I would recommend you know, users upgrading to Windows 8.1 now if they're vMix users, um, because it'll be a much smoother upgrade path to Windows 10 when it's released later this year. There you go. Martin says upgrade to 8.1. Pull the trigger. <laughs> okay. Today's show, we're doing, uh, we're doing the old traditional, traditional, how about that? It's only been around for four years, but it's already traditional. We're doing the traditional Skype call-in Windows. Uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm capturing the window. I'm, I'm porting the audio uh, from the Skype channel into my mixer here, and then I'm sending that back into vMix, and I understand that's not exactly how you've designed vMix to work, but I'm still trying to figure out the audio from, from, from Martin Sinclair's brain. How is he thinking about audio? Oh, my goodness. And I'm getting my, my arm around it. But uh, Livestream has come out with an integration of WebRTC into Livestream that replaces Skype in terms of a live interview guest. Do you have anything on the, the any, anything in your thinking or anything that you're, you're tempted to try in, in integrating WebRTC? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a matured uh, technology now, at least compared to where it was, say, a year ago. Is that uh, in your thinking? Yeah. Yeah, I've been keeping my eye on WebRTC for for a while now, just waiting for it to get to the point where it's where it's ready to deploy and it's reliable enough to be used in a a production or streaming environment. And I think it's only just starting to get that way. They've 
been a few reliability issues. The way it works and the way it connects to users is really cool. You don't need a central server. But the disadvantage of that is, you know, there are some challenges there with firewalls and and different network speeds and, you know, Skype has just one of its advantages is it just it degrades the quality of the video automatically and the the quality of the audio in a, a very seamless way, whereas WebRTC is still, I guess, in the early stages of catching up with Skype. Um, but yeah, WebRTC is certainly something very interested to have because it's one of the um, the big questions customers ask. How do they get Skype into vMix? How can they do a Skype show with multiple guests, for example? Right. Um, and if we have a few minutes here, I can give uh, users a quick run through of how I do things on this end. Um, <laughs> If you like, oh um, come on, twist to... our arm. <laughs> so if you if you I guess throw me up full screen so they can see, I'll bring up the desktop capture of VMix I've got here. Uh, let's put that in there. All right. Um, so this is this is my this is uh, my VMix session. I have just one camera here. Um, this is all running on a laptop, by the way. Um, I have a video clip over here. I have the 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 chat room, and I've got a multi view if I wanted to throw up the chat room and my desktop capture um, over there. So what I've done for Skype is I've got my microphone here. It's bringing into VMix the audio from the microphone that's just sitting right in front of me. You know, if I lift it up, it's this little little quirky little R two D two looking microphone, um, which is called the Blue Snowball, which is pretty. Uh, pretty handy, especially on the road. Um, so I have that here as an input into vMix. And then I have my audio mixer over here. So I have the input coming in here uh, into vMix. And you'll see here master and A and B channels in the audio mixer. Hang on. What I'll do is <laughs> I'll turn on the cursor so you guys could see what I'm pointing at. So you can see over here in this corner of vMix, I have the microphone input and I've got master which is what I hear in my earphones here and I've got A which is a auxiliary audio bus so I can send the audio out to somewhere else and I've got B as a second auxiliary bus. So what I'm doing with the microphone is I'm sending it out via A. So in the settings here, um, whoops, I'm going to turn off capture hidden window. If I go to the settings here and I go to the audio outputs tab, you can see here I'm sending A to line one virtual audio cable. So this is a, a $30, $40 free software that sets up virtual audio cables um, in Windows. So I'm using that to send out the A. So as you can see in the mixer, I've got my video clip here sending out to A and I've got my microphone sending out to A. And that's going out the virtual line out. So, so far so good. Um, if I open up Skype now, and I go to the tools and the options menu here, you can see under audio settings, I have the microphone uh, line one virtual audio cable. So you can see the microphone is in vMix, it's being sent out of the A bus to line one in the virtual audio cable, and then it's being brought into Skype via the line one virtual audio cable. And you can see the audio level moves there as I speak. So that's how I'm bringing the audio in to Skype via vMix. And then I've just got the normal speaker output here for Skype um, to send it out to my to my earphones. Now this is a way that I can send you know Skype output into Skype pretty easily. And the, under the video settings I just have the vMix video which you can enable as an external output. Um, but the reverse is also true. I could set as the speakers in Skype line one and then I could go back into vMix and I could add as an audio input here uh, line one virtual audio cable and like that just like that I've got the audio from Skype coming directly into vMix. Um, now the reason why I've set A instead of master is because of this very initially very daunting um, concept in audio mixing for Skype called mix minus. I need to make sure that the audio being sent to Skype doesn't include the audio coming back from Skype. So I'm hearing you, you, got, um, you, Tom, here from Skype in my earphones, but I don't want that audio coming back out into 
uh, Skype. So that's why I've unticked the microphone for the master and only ticked the microphone on A so you guys can only hear me and I can only hear you. So there's A and B there. So you could have two Skype guests or you could have four if you share some of the channels. But this virtual audio cable um, software is sort of the missing piece of the puzzle. It allows you to route the audio from vMix out to other applications like Skype and then back in again. And you can set up multiple cables for multiple guests and you can wire it all up that way. So that's a basic you know, overview of how, how Skype works in vMix today. And one thing we're looking at is the virtual audio cable. Can we include that and bundle that with vMix just so customers don't have to purchase from multiple different um, locations? So I'll switch it back to me. Um, me now, so hopefully, you know, the guys in the chat room and the viewers out there that are watching us on YouTube have a quick eyed overview of how you can use Skype um, with a vMix. Um, and we'll certainly be keeping an eye on WebRTC and seeing if that's something we can build into vMix uh, without having to use a separate application perhaps sometime in the future. That was a great explanation. I, I love Jerry's comment in the chat room. He says, I'd dearly love to see a more detailed and slower paced tutorial on this. I'll be watching the YouTube a zillion times. And I understand, <laughs> Jerry, I'll be right with you watching it now. Now, where was he clicking? What was he doing? Well, and, and Martin, that just, that really underlies the, 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 the basic concept that you've used that everything is happening inside the PC. Um, that the audio is being generated internally and routed internally, same with the video. And that's why people like me that came from a separate mixer world, I mean, you know, here's, here's my baby right here and everything is, is going on right through there. Everything's routed through the mixer. I'm controlling it the way I want to physically and then I'm sending it back, uh, which is one of the reasons why I've struggled in learning uh, vMix is because I've got this, this basic understanding that just doesn't apply in your case. It's like, you know, I went from playing baseball to playing cricket. And, you know, the same rule is a similar game, but the same rules just don't apply. So it's, it, and I suspect Wirecast people are somewhat the same way. So that's going to be one of the challenges I have as I do my shows is to say, okay, folks, here's how you can begin to adjust your thinking the same way I'm adjusting my thinking to becoming less reliant on another piece of hardware and allowing the software to begin doing all this stuff. And if you're going to take virtual audio cable, VAC, and integrate it or at least bundle it, uh, with vMix, I think that's going to be a, a great opportunity. And for folks that are coming on board today, they're not going to learn all the bad habits that I learned in terms of, or the different habits, let's put it that way, that I learned in terms of how to work audio with things like VidBlaster and, and Wirecast. Um, well, I'll talk about that a little bit uh, as well, because using an audio mixer is also an important option in a live production. Um, not necessarily for Skype guests, although it's useful if you want to use separate computers for Skype. And we know of customers that do that. They bring all the audio into the audio mixer. That way they can handle the mix minus. If they're familiar with audio mixes, mix minuses are relatively easy to set up and make sure the audio is all going in the right different places. Um, but just, you know, as a quick explanation of the mixer approach, that's what was used for the Teradek live show. So they had an audio mixer there, standard audio mixer. All of the microphones were coming into that mixer. And then the mixer output was then being plugged into the vMix Go, which was just a standard audio input. Mm -hmm. um, you could install a USB device, bring that audio. And that audio was being brought into vMix as just a microphone input. Right. Just the same way I've brought in my little microphone here. Instead of the microphone, they've been bringing in the mixing desk. And then what uh, I've set that for is that audio that was coming in, I've set that to go directly to the output or the recording or the stream bypassing vMix completely so that they had full control in their audio mixer of all the audio levels. Um, so they do that in vMix settings. You can choose the audio source that you want to use for recording and streaming. So instead of the vMix audio mix, I selected there the audio input microphone um, or line input as it was on the, um, in that particular system. Um, and then the audio clips, the audio coming out of vMix then was just, you know, all the video clips uh, and stuff like that was just being sent out again as a, an audio output that went into that audio mixer. So 
basically all the audio was completely offloaded. VMix wasn't doing any of the mixing other than sending video clip audio out to the mixer. The final mix was coming out of the mixer uh, into the system and then vMix was mixing that with the final video for the output and you add a little small bit of negative delay to the video clips in vMix so it all synchronizes and a little bit of a positive delay in the audio to compensate um, for the microphones coming in a little bit earlier than the camera. Um, but what I, what I should do is I'll just put a knowledge base article out there in, in a couple of weeks' time. They'll just go through, well, how we did the Teradek live show, what was the workflow, how the cables were all connected together, how people can use audio mixes, um, and then and hopefully people will, will uh, find that very helpful in setting up their own audio uh, setups if they want to use an audio mixer. It must be tough to be you. Because <laughs> everybody wants a piece of you. Everybody's saying, Martin, why don't you do this? Martin, why don't you do that? And, uh, you know, there's only so much of you to go around. How in the world do you cope? <laughs> uh, I guess a lot of late nights programming, <laughs> I guess. Um, it's, it's good for me that it's still, it's still an amazing challenge. You know, customers come to me with, a, wouldn't it be great if... A, B, or C are possible on the PC, and if they're exciting challenges enough, you know, soon enough they'll appear in vMix, or if a lot of customers ask for them, you know, that's how we prioritize the features in vMix. If we get a lot of customers, overwhelming number of customers saying, hey, we want this feature in vMix, uh, chances are it'll appear in vMix, you know, 16 or 17 or something like that. Um, and I'm just seeing on the chat room, Timothy's asking if I could confirm the link he's got there in the chat room for the virtual audio cable. And yes, that's the correct one. So it's the top link on Google when you search for virtual audio cable. And we'll put that in the YouTube show notes for folks that are watching us on YouTube. Good deal. All right. Let's, let's change gears for just a second and we'll get you off the hot seat a little bit because I've, I've been pressuring you. You've, you've done well, young man. You're doing all right there. <laughs> um, one of the things that I've noticed in... In listening to you talk, uh, you were on uh, George Price's show or earlier this week, that old coot from, from Indiana. Tell you what, I love that guy. He's great. And, and you've been on um, um, Vance and, and, and Mark's show, um, and you did the Teradex shows, and you've got your own show, and you've got your own, you, you've got your own community going. You've kind of build up, building up this vMix community of all these folks out there that are that are advocates, apostles even for vMix. I mean that you know you, if you go to the vMix chat room, uh, which you can get to by going to vmixhd.com and clicking on forums. I guess it's not a chat room; it's a forum. Um, you've got lots of folks out there that are are waving the vMix flag and are convinced that you are the man. How does that feel? <laughs> well, I, I I you know put the credit to the community. That's it's something I never really expected to happen. I thought I'd set up the forum there and you'd get a couple of questions um, each day that I would answer and then everybody else would be able to benefit from. Sort of a knowledge base. That's all I expected from it when I built it all those years ago. But the community has just amazed me. They go in there and people ask questions and they happily reply and they come up with solutions I didn't think of um, or ways to use vMix I didn't even consider. So. I mean, it's just a, amazing, you know, to, to watch that community. I can't really take credit for it. It's something that just happened completely um, unexpectedly. I bet, though, that's the way you are in real life, that, that, that you have people that, that support you and encourage you and, are, and surround you in, at, back home. Well, yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, <laughs> I've just been, you know, running this, 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 you know, company. I started it myself, and we brought a lot of staff on. And the staff on in our company are my friends, you know, people I've known for years and years. And that's just, you know, it's been a really helpful to have people you know and, and trust and and to work with. And in my family, just you know, ha has always supported. Uh, me in building this company, even as I was a as a teenager and just tinkering with computers and stuff, um, they never said, you know, become a doctor or anything like that. Or even when the early days of not knowing whether the business was going to be successful or not. So I guess, yeah, uh, support of my family and my friends now working with me in the business has been has been really great. And 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 you're good at that. I can tell. 
I can tell. You, you don't have to respond. Just, just soak that one in. Uh, soak that <laughs> one in. Um, oh, golly. When you, when you get to be my age, you, you're going to find these thoughts that just fly into your head, and they don't even slow down as they go out the other side. So I just had this great question that I was going to ask you, and, it, and it's absolutely gone. Um, but it had to do with, with the, the vMix community. and Oh, anyway, um, one of the things that, that and, and this is, oh, by the way, this is the criticism time of this show, okay? We're, we're into the critique time, so you can, you can sit back and say, okay, Sinclair was, oh, I can't even say that. Tom was buttering me up and trying to make me feel good, and now <laughs> he's, he's going to sucker punch me. One of the criticisms that I've got of vMix and I've got it of Wirecast, and I've got it of VidBlaster, is the documentation that, as a computer guy, I grew up with. You know, Microsoft writing these wonderful manuals that detail everything, and the tutorials that went with them, you know, published books that came with software when you got it in the... I mean, I'm looking over here at my shelf, and, you know, there's just racks of you know, 10-year-old software that had wonderful manuals. Now everything comes on a PDF, and it's on a CD, or you download it. And, but the documentation, oh, you guys are developing so quickly that the richness of the documentation is not there that people like me have come to expect. And the documentation that I do get, and this is not just a criticism of you, but the documentation that I do get is, this is how this function works. A, B, C, this is how it works. I don't wanna know how it works. I want to know how to apply it. I want to, I want some examples, and that's that's what's going on in in your forum, is that users are saying, yeah, this is how we take this feature and we put it with this feature and we spin it like this, and this comes out. That's exciting. That's going to sell software. Um, and so, as as much, and I know, oh boy, I, I hate to even ask you to do anything because you're doing so much already. But as you can't, as, it, as it, you know, if you've got an intern that's just sitting around not doing anything, you know, sit down and tell her to write a thousand word essay on, on how inputs work or something like that. Now, I'll tell you who's done a great job of this is George Price. George has gotten in there and figured this stuff out and he's trying to apply it. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this old badger, he's older than I am, but he's teaching me stuff all the time. And I'm thinking, Golly, that's what you guys need is somebody out there that's doing a doing a that vid blaster guy show that's talking about how vmix is working real life applications um, you know great examples of of this person over here that's using vmix like this and this is how they're doing it let me show you how they're doing it pow that's that would be so great i'd watch that show every week I'd buy a subscription to that show, I would. I'd pay $5 yeah. for it. <laughs> so I would, I'm you know, in, in response, I'd say that's a, it's a fair criticism. Um, it's sort of a, a fact of life of fast-growing software. I set a target for myself five years ago of what feature set um, I wanted to have um, in the live production market. Um, and I think we've finally gotten there where, you know, 99% of the features that customers have vast majority been asking for are now available in vMix. So I think now that things are settling a little bit, it will give me an opportunity to go through and do um, those sort of use case uh, tutorials, which is what you would call them, because the help file that vMix has is what I would call technical documentation. Um, and it's the sort of documentation I've, uh, you know, um, as a programmer have referred to on Microsoft, you know, like TechNet. It tells you what this, this bolt or this nut does and what it doesn't do and what it works with. And that's sort of, you know, vMix does. If you're curious about what a button does, um, in, in specifically, you look at the help file and will say, oh, this button does this, but it won't do that. And so that's technical documentation. But you're absolutely right. There needs to be use case documentation. Whereas I have a production with X amount of cameras and I want to add in, you know, these sources and I want to send it to this destination. How do I do it? And you sort of have documentation with a lot of graphics or you do videos, you know, what George Price has done, uh, what a few people on YouTube have put together, a few demo videos that show you you know, all the way from A to Z, how to do a particular uh, production. So it's certainly something um, 
looking into and even on the vmix side of things a couple of the ideas i have on the roadmap uh, for vmix uh, 16 or vmix 17 are these you know sort of wizard templates in vmix where people can can have a vmix configured based on a standard uh, scenario if they put in four cameras they want one output for Skype and they want one streaming output and they want to do all of it at 720p, it'll just set everything up uh, with one click. Um, so I'm looking at those sort of scenarios and if, if users out there, even those people in the chat room, want to email us the particular scenarios they would like to see, that would be helpful. Because the other challenge as well is, you know, vMix and the feature set it currently has, there is literally an infinite number of combinations that it could be used in. So I can't write documentation for them all. So I'm really, you know, asking the community now, uh, tell us which sp specific scenarios they use the most and want, think they'll get value out of learning. And we'll target those specific ones and we'll make sure the documentation is available for those scenarios and, and videos and all of that sort of stuff that goes along with it. I see Rob is in the chat room and Rob was the winner of uh, the vmix that you gave away at nab and and rob has said that uh, vmix has some good tutorials on youtube to get you going but i think more will come along as more people use the software i'm still still surprised by the lack of videos uh, for any of this broadcasting software vidblaster wirecast etc obviously rob hasn't been watching my show that vidblaster guy very often but that's okay we'll, we'll give him a pass on that one uh, but, but yeah, there's, there's the criticism. And when, when I started my very first show, it was in July 2012, using Bidblaster, called That Bidblaster Guy. And, and, you know, I'm just going to lay it all out there. I mean, you know, we're big, we're big people. We, we can take it. Um, one, of the, one of the concepts that I was working with is that there were, there were three groups, three targets, audiences that I was trying to reach. One was people that were doing talk shows. You know, somebody that had a passion that wanted to do a talk show about it. So a lot of the shows and the tutorials were geared towards that. The second was churches. Great, 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 great way to use broadcasting is to broadcast church services or Bible studies or, or whatever. Um, and a lot of people have been very successful with that. And I'm not just talking about mega churches. I'm talking about churches with congregations of 50 or 60 people that have gotten virtual congregations of the same size. Um, and then the third was sports broadcasting, um, which is where I started all this, you know, back in 2007, I guess. I duct taped a, a webcam to a tripod and broadcast 14 hours worth of soccer on a little screen about this big uh, to some folks back in Oklahoma and they loved it. I mean, it was so primitive. I took a clipboard and I'd write the score on the clipboard and then I'd hold the clipboard in front of the camera. It was, but, and I knew there had to be something out there like, like vMix that, that could do all that. Um, but all of that, and golly, my, my thought has, has abandoned me once again. You know, th there was this great buildup to this wonderful idea and then it, then it just slipped out. That's why, why we should take notes. Um, but, but all of that stuff has got to, to bring us to a place where we, well, let me, let me back up just a sec. We, we've got the, 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 the three different audiences that I was working with, and we sort of pitched to those audiences, and we're, we're pretty successful within our, our little small part of the world. And so I would suggest that you might pick you know, what, what your audiences are, what your bulk audiences are, and, and try to divide them into anywhere from two to five categories and, and pitch to those categories. Um, because, you know, I would even, I would, I would pay extra for vMix if I could buy a subscription to a video s uh, series that came with it. I, I would pay extra for that. That would have value to me. Um, and as a reseller, Full disclosure here, folks. I'm a, I'm a vMix reseller. Um, as a reseller, I would I would be all over that product, recommending it to my clients to to bring it in as as part of their package to pay an extra thirty dollars or fifty dollars or a hundred dollars, whatever it might be, so that they can get better use sooner and be happier. Anyway, just a plug. Let's see what the chat room is saying. Um, uh, here we go. Um, Let's see. Um, 
Oh, Rob is being nice out there. Now he's sucking up to me. Okay. Um, uh, Rick was asking if you have a live show. Martin. No, I don't. Um, don't have time. I was just, just, <laughs> yeah, don't have time. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's only so much. There's so many other shows out there now. You guys, streaming idiots, um, George Price. You know, there's. It's. I think it's much better to hear it from the community. People, real people out there in the world that have actually used VMix and how they've applied it for their own particular shows, rather than just hearing me talk about what I think is the way people should do it. I think it's much better to see them. Uh, have a go and, and do it themselves and have shows about that. Um, but I was involved in the Teradek live show in helping them out and, you know, they had a great team there that did all the switching. Um, but I basically just provided them with a vMix Go and gave them some some tips and advice on how they could use it when putting together that show. So I guess that's the closest I've gotten into actually doing a show myself. Now, now when you were working with the Teradex guys, did did you, I mean, did you show up and say, okay, here's the Go Here's how you use it. See you later. Um, well, it, I plan to be on deck, you know, helping them out and setting everything up and, and, you know, going through all of these different scenarios and teaching them and training them. But it turned out I just dropped it off, um, plugged it all in, you know, helped them out with a basic preset that they were going to use for the week. And they they took... took um, con- control over it and did everything and I was just there each morning asking them hey you need any help and they were they were like no we've, we've got it all sorted out so that was that was great to see and you know I'll give a shout out to Blaze Streaming Media um, they're a company out of Oregon um, that does live streaming shows so they're the, they're the crew that Teradek hired um, to do the show they don't usually use vMix um, you know because the vMix Go hasn't been out that long so we gave them a go and and the guys there had to basically learn it um, you know as the show was happening um, so they were a really great crew so um, you know thanks to those guys for, for doing all the legwork and I was basically just able to go back to my booth at NAB and and do the demos and do all of that sort of stuff um, without having to worry about um, helping out in the Teradex show. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was great to see. And what a testament to vMix that you could just turn it over to them and they could say, okay, we got it, let's go. And there's yeah. no better way to learn something than be forced right into the middle of it and having to figure out or else, you, you know, you look like an idiot. So... <laughs> And then you get to come on my show. <laughs> oh, golly. David, David Stempers is in the chat room. He says he's a huge fan of v- vMix, just letting you know that he owns the 4K version. Thank you, David. That's great. Um, Thanks, David. David is also asking, any word of getting the stream access for GoPro cameras? Um, it's up to GoPro, really. Um, they haven't provided an open API um, as far as I know, I haven't actually looked at it in the past few months, but back when we looked at it last, around December, they still hadn't made available an open API for stream access. So as soon as they do that, um, I'll be right there implementing support for it. Um, cause we implement support for the Teradek, um, devices. They have this great open API. And so the Teradek cube, um, and Teradek Sputnik and all of that sort of fun stuff. You can use that to bring in wireless cameras into vMix. Got it. Good, good question. Thank you, David. All right, guys, we, we, we have kept Martin way too long, but I'm going to give you one last shot at asking a question, if you can do it in the next minute or so. Um, and I appreciate you guys that have asked questions, and we've, we've, we haven't really avoided them. They just <laughs> scrolled by too quickly. Um, Martin, as, as they formulate their thoughts... Um, and as you look forward to the future, VMix 16, VMix 17, anything that you could uh, give us a hint about that might be coming down the pike that would be just really kind of cool and juicy? <laughs> um, I think all the big exciting features, you know, the only thing I could think of is if um, it all works out and all of the pieces fall into place, you know, web R2C functionality could be something to be looked at. Um, many of the other stuff is, I guess, less exciting, but maybe to the technical crowd out there, they might be interested in. We have on our roadmap um, ASIO support. Um, so that's a driver that allows you to bring in, you know, 
eight, 16, you know, even 32 audio channels via a single USB device. So we're looking at enabling support for that. Behringer um, X32, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so um, looking for support for that. Uh, the refinement of a few areas, as I was saying about the ability to create new presets or templates that are there built in for common scenarios, um, little things like that. Um, yeah, so as far as the major features go, I guess we've already done 4K. 8K doesn't look like it's a thing that anybody will need anytime soon. So 4K seems to be it for at least the next decade or so. So I think we've got that sorted. We just released the instant replay. Um, that was a 12-month project um, working on that. Um, and now we've got, you know, sporting small local sporting teams starting to use uh, the vMix instant replay capabilities. So that's cool to see. Um, but now it's just, you know, refining what's already there, making it a little bit easy to use, perhaps looking at all of that documentation stuff you've already mentioned. Um, and and all, as always, you know, looking at the forums and looking at what people are requesting. We have a feature request section on the forum, and I would encourage anybody with feature requests to drop a line in there. Um, people vote on them and add add their own requests onto the features. And I look at that before every release and sort of make a list of what is everybody talking about, what is everybody uh, asking for, and that's how I you know work on the next release. So the planning stages for vMix 16 are already well underway. We've sort of got the feature set worked out for that. But for vMix 17 and 18 and 19 and, and on it goes, uh, we'll be looking at the feature requests uh, out on the forums. Outstanding. Well, I've, I've got a question. As a reseller, occasionally I get asked, um, do, do you have a site license? That is, a, a major corporation would like to buy the software and they, they want to get a license for the entire site as opposed to a desktop by desktop license. Is that something that you guys have, have bumped into or are considering? Um. I've, I briefly looked at that a few years ago, um, was about to implement it and around that time, um, that w it was around that time that the, the first of the, the, the crackers or hackers got onto the scene and were, were regularly trying to, to hack vMix. Um, so we sort of had to make a stronger licensing system for vMix to, to combat against that. Um, so since then, the idea of site licenses has faded away. I mean, vMix is affordable enough that a corporation could conceivably purchase, you know, 50 HD licenses for less than the price of a site license traditionally anyway. Um, so that's a great way to get started. But uh, as for, you know, a single code or registration to cover an entire organization, um, it's it's risky because, you know, it the key could leak out and, and then suddenly the hackers uh, right. will have a field day. So I'm a little bit wary of that and um, making sure that when customers buy vMix, they're getting a product they know that they couldn't, that's, you know, their friend down the street couldn't get for free, you know, from a hacker. So there's a, it's a, it's a, a customers, you know, regularly ask us to make sure, hey, can we be sure that if we buy this, some guy down the road that's not going to honestly purchase the software um, could get it for free? And, you know, so far, so good. vMix has been, we've been on top of that sort of thing. So customers can know if they purchase the software, um, they're not going to have to compete with, you know, a free um, versions out there in the hacker community. I, I, I'm sorry for that. That's not fair. Yeah. And that's a fact of life with software. That's, that's the way it goes. We've just been fortunate, you know, um, not to, uh, to be one step ahead of, um, of the hacker community. And, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a huge problem anymore. I don't worry too much about it. But Good. it's, it's just a little bit scary offering things like site licenses because that's, that's sure. I guess, the door that hackers are waiting to get in there and, and um, put vMix out there on the Internet for everybody. Right. No, don't, don't want that. We, we want everybody to use it, <laughs> but we want yeah. you to be able to profit from it so that you can keep doing great things with it. Well, I, I, folks, I, the people in the chat room are saying, you know, fantastic uh, show. Um, what is it? Jerry says, it's gotten me totally psyched to work harder at learning vMix. So, so there's, there's the comment of the night right there. 
Um, that was the intent that, that people would get excited by this. And I think you need to get excited about this young man because he's doing some really cool stuff. And he is, he is I think, he has really, the, 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 the streaming industry is a pretty good sized ship right now. And he's put a rudder on it and he's turned it in the vMix direction. And it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the industry um, re responds to that. I mean, you know, he was just named by streaming media. Um, you know, VMix was named Gear of the Year for 2014, 2015. You know, w well done. Um, and that, that says that the industry is recognizing that, that Martin is doing some things that are, are really changing the face of the industry. And so, well, hat tip for me on that one, Martin. Keep it up and... Uh, you know, anything that us little guys out here can do to help, you, you know that we're, we're going to do it. Folks, we're going to pull the plug on this show, uh, but uh, we'll have a little little post-show. RJ and, and, and Jerry have bought cookies and, and cake for afterwards, so they'll be in the chat room distributing that. And Martin, we hope you'll hang around for just a minute on that, too. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, because uh, you never know when we're going to have good shows like this. At least once a year, we end up with a good one. And, uh, and Martin, thank you for coming on. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And thanks, thanks guys, in the chat room. It's, it's been cool seeing all you guys um, posting questions and comments and so on there. And i um, happy to be back anytime. Anytime I'm over in the U.S. and I'm in this time zone, i um, happy to, to jump on and, and talk on your show. So thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome, and, and we can always do a special time that's 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 you know more suited for Australian time than five o'clock in the morning. So, thank you, folks. I don't have any great grand outro to get us out of this, so uh, you know we're just gonna we're gonna play a little bit of a uh, little bit of theme music and say you know good night to you and and thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next time. <laughs>